What's up, everybody? It's Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and we have a special guest on the show, former Penn State running back and Chicago Bears running back, Curtis Ennis. So good to have you on the show, Curtis. Man, it's awesome to be here, man. Like I was telling you, you were talking a little earlier. I know we've kind of been trying to link up for a couple of years now. It's great to kind of put things together, um, you know, just talk a little football past, present, and, you know, future. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, uh, very grateful that you reached out and got back to me on that and everything. So it's an honor to have you on. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Curtis is a former Penn State running back, Big Ten Player of the Year, and former Chicago Bears running back. Uh, I believe you're fifth overall in the draft. Um, so uh, a great running back. Um, let's start at the beginning. You played your high school ball at um, Massasanawa Valley in Union City, Ohio. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, it's hard to pronounce, but uh, Massasanawa <laughs> Valley. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> that, yeah, don't feel bad. I mean, there's been a lot of people that kind of butcher that up, but yeah, that's where <laughs> I played my high school ball there, yeah. You were dominant. Uh, you were a three-time All-State selection. Uh, did you play both linebacker and running back in that time? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, very fortunate enough to – it was a very small school. Uh, I think my graduating class was like 37 people. Oh, wow. um, so um, it was a very small farming community school here in Southwest Ohio. Um, you know, was fortunate enough to play all, you know, all sports, um, be involved in a farming community. You know, everything is built around hard work. So, um, yeah, had a really good run, um, you know, through high school. Had some really good teammates and things like that as well. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, you were dominant MVP of the Big 33 Football Classic. Um, 71 touchdowns in high school. That's, that's legendary stuff right there. Did you uh, – were you absolutely dominating like everybody? The people just not able to stop you at all in high school? Um, you know, I've had – there was games we, we lost, obviously. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I wouldn't say I was just dominant. I would just say I was just blessed. You know what I mean? Um, and, and through that busting, I was able to kind of have a little bit more athletic ability than, you know, my peers, at, you know, during that time frame. But um, I think the biggest thing that I took out of high school was just a lot of the things that transpired and happened as it kept progressing me through, you know, sports and things like that. It kind of gave me a really good foundation of like worth ethic and, you know, what you want in life, what you work for um, and things of that nature. Nice. Did you have the NFL as a goal back then or were you just enjoying playing sports? Um, you know what, it, it, um, to be honest with you, um, basketball was my first love. So I really, you know, football was something I enjoyed doing, um, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, from that, from that perspective, um, basketball was my first love. You know, I, I had visions of playing in the NBA and, and things of that nature. So um, football was just something just that, you know, things just started to happen later on in high school. And mm -hmm. I kind of just ran with it from there. I should have played both sports at Penn State, but, you know, it's what it is. <laughs> That's cool, though. Um, what was your – you chose to attend Penn State and play for the legendary coach, Joe Paterno. What was your college recruitment experience like, and what led to you choosing Penn State? Well, there was three schools I was really um, – uh, through the recruiting process was Indiana, Michigan, and, and obviously Penn State. Uh, Indiana, because we had family ties there. Um, my first cousin, Rick Enos, was all Big Ten in 1976. Oh, wow. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that – I kind of made them a priority to give them an opportunity um, with their um, – his coach is Lee Corso. Um, so I took a visit there, um, went to Michigan. Uh, coach uh, Gary Moeller was a coach at that time. They were recruiting me as kind of an athlete, more of on the linebacker side. Okay. And then finally went to Penn State, you know, all three of those schools. I went to football camps. Um, you know, it was like almost like a workout, you know. I came from such a small school, right? You know, they're used to getting kids out of big, you know, um, big high schools and stuff all over the country. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing me come from a small school like I had came from, um, I don't think it really created doubt, but I had to do a little bit more um, proving myself than yeah. a lot of maybe some of the other kids did. But I was okay with that because it was already enriched in me about hard work and making yourself, you know, who you are based upon that. Nice. Yeah, I've, uh, <clears throat> I grew up around the Notre Dame area and I've mm -hmm. moved out here to Seattle and stuff. But in my opinion, the Big Ten is my favorite uh, brand of football favorite conference to watch. I just love the style of football that's played in the Big Ten, even to this day. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. Um, now, in 1995, you would win Big Ten Co-Freshman of the Year, along with Michigan defensive back Charles Woodson. 
Uh, you'd run for 680 yards, four touchdowns. What was it like as a freshman at Penn State and winning the the co Big Ten of the of the year? It was everything happened so quick. Um, I think you know when I first got in there on campus, I had just came back for I just uh, I went to private school for a year, or like a prep school, working my academics and understanding you know the work grind from the academic point in college. And then I just immediately went to Penn State that summer and started working out with the team. So I kind of had a leg up over some of my um, other guys that came in, kind of understanding what the expectations were a little bit. Um, and then things started to happen to where we had got some injuries, got things banged up. Um, first game against Texas Tech, actually I played outside linebacker. Um, okay. Which, is, which in there, you know, I, I really understood the kind of the defense side of it. And it's like, man, this is a little bit more complex. It takes time to understand that. And then we're going into our second game my freshman year. Um, I had a green jersey, which was second team offense in my locker. And my red jersey, which was second team defense at the time, was no longer there. So it kind of alarmed me. I'm like, oh, man, what's going on? And there was a note to go see coach, the running back coach. So I went over to his office and said, hey, what's going on? And uh, they said, hey, we want to try you out, you know, running back, you know, people banged up, you know, things of this nature. Uh, starting linebacker, that, that's some front of he's doing well. Jim Nelson, um, you know, I think, you know, we've got some things going on. So they gave me a few plays, I think a total of maybe three, three to six plays. Uh, and they were all running plays. Um, went out there uh, against Temple and, you know, I think I had like 100, 130 plus yards and three touchdowns. Nice. Um, and that, that was the end of it, you know. Um, Got into Big Ten play, um, had some success against, uh, you know, a really good high state team that year. Um, you know, it was just because Coach Paterno wasn't really a, a coach like they are now playing a lot of freshmen. Like, you know, that wasn't the big thing back then. If you was playing as a freshman, you was considered, you know, I don't know, something better than the norm. But, yeah. Um, just very fortunate enough. I had a really good offensive line. Uh, I yeah. think out of that offensive line, two of them went first round, Jeff Harding and Andre Johnson. So, I mean, you know, everything was – the table was set. All I had to do was kind of just really run the ball and just run hard. And yeah. that's what kind of I built my foundation off of was what I seen and what I did as a freshman at Penn State. At that time, playing both sides of the ball, what did you prefer, defense or offense? I like running people over. I mean, you know, <laughs> defense was really like – you know, you had to be at the right place at the right time. And if you wasn't, you know what I'm saying, like you could, you could put 10 other guys in a bad situation, you know. Yeah. So that was there was a lot of like thinking on defense, and then defense is all reaction. So imagine being new at something, and you're thinking and you're acting. So you're you're already playing slower, right? So yeah. um, for me, it was easy for offense. You know, learn to learn the plays, learn where the holes are, like I did any other time. Get the ball, and then just let you know the blessing of my God giving the ability take over from there. So that was kind of the the part of that I preferred more from an offensive standpoint than a defensive thing. I couldn't like play the game like I wanted to defense. I was just thinking and was slow to react. It was very frustrating at that time being a young freshman. Yeah. And I feel like you played the running back position almost like a defender. Like you seeked out contact and ran people over. And I love that in a running back. Oh, I was that was the funnest part about about it because you know, there's four, four quarters to every game, right? And that my, my theory and my mindset was if I'm getting three and four yards a carry, but I'm hitting and, and, and initiating a contact, there's going to become what I always call a business decision, right? Yep. Defensive players, especially defensive backs, I always got to make a business decision. Like, man, do I really <laughs> want to tackle this dude? You know what I mean? So I always wanted to put that defender in that situation where he had to make a decision. I've already made mine, but, you know, being able – to make him make one and, and see what he was going to do. He had four quarters to make decisions, and I was really banking on that fourth quarter that he was going to make the one like, oh, I'm done. I'm tired of thumping <laughs> on this guy. So that yeah. was kind of my, my philosophy and behind, you know, why I ran the football. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, in 96, uh, as your sophomore, Penn State would go 11-2 and two and uh, defeat Texas in the Fiesta Bowl, finish the season ranked seven in the country. Uh, you had combined for 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns, um, including the opener against USC that year. You go for 240 yards and three touchdowns. What do you remember about that opening game to start that season against USC? Well, I didn't know I, was a, I wasn't the starter, right? Okay. I had a bad uh, spring uh, academically. And, and if you know Coach Paterno, um, you know, that's one of his no-nos. Like, you know, academically, you know, if you're not, you know, doing what you need to do, um, he would always look at that as a lack of trust, right? 
Um, so I didn't perform well academically. Um, was kind of enjoying the, the fact that a successful, you know, freshman season um, mm. and was kind of resting on that. Um, got to the point, had some ups and downs, ebb and flows of life. Um, and then it just clicked, you know. Um, I had to work my tail off uh, in, in camp. I had to make sure I had the grade to go to camp. Um, just checking these things off the box. Um, and I'll never forget the conversation that Coach and I had right before, you know, we went out, you know, start warming up for the kickoff classic. He's like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to go with you, but if, if your things ain't going well, I'm putting somebody else in. And him let, giving me that, that, that opportunity and that confidence that he was going to go with me, um, I knew I wasn't going to give the keys of the car to nobody else to drive. I mean, that's uh, what I had been working for was to assure that I was going to do what he had asked me to do, and that was um, – be the person that he recruited me to be, but also more from a standpoint of going out there playing the game the way um, Penn State plays the game. That's hard, physical, fast, you know, similar to what they're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. And then in 97, um, the team would go into the season ranked number one, start 7-0, a uh, couple losses down the stretch, but you would have an incredible year, 1,500 yards, 20 touchdowns as a workhorse running back on that team. Uh, you would win a Big Ten Co-Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I'm shocked, and, and tell me what you think of this. I mean, such a loaded Heisman finalist class with Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf, Charles Woodson, Randy Moss. But with numbers like that, I mean, incredible numbers, and to not be in the Heisman finalist group, that's, that's crazy to me. That, it was such a crazy year. Yeah, it was. And as you could tell, the guys, you just, just... – rattled off and you guys are sitting up in Canton, you know what I mean? Or on the way there, right? So there's that shit good to show how good football was at that time. Yeah. Um, you know, it was during the big back era when you look at film, I mean, there's like nine, 10 guys in the box, you know, there wasn't none of this spread stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, there was people that were doing it, but it always consisted of, you know, playing fast, playing physical, um, you know, play action pass, you know, getting the ball down the field and utilizing the run and stuff like that. So, I never really looked at it like anything other than what it was. Um, but in the same aspect of it, that year I felt that we could have won the national championship. Uh, I think once Aaron, when, when Aaron Harris got hurt, he was the other back that kind of complimented me. Um, I thought we was the best kind of one-two punch in, in college football. And it showed in that high State game. And then the following game, he blew out his knee. And, uh, it, uh -huh. you know, when you look back on it, man, we had all the – had all the things, you know, to kind of win a national championship that year. And losing him, that was that hurt is really, really bad. Yeah, it's always nice to have that one-two punch at running back. And uh, when yeah. you lose it, it, it changes a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, it changes the dynamics of our entire season. We were fortunate enough to kind of, you know, push through. Um, but in the same aspect of it, it all kind of fell off at the end. Um, but, you know, give or take, it was a great run, um, you know, um, we did some things well, um, you know, and played with some really, really good teammates at Penn State, that's for sure. That's true. Um, I've had the opportunity to interview uh, Brandon Short, who was your teammate on that team. Uh, you, yeah. uh, was LeVar Arrington there at that yep. time? Uh, Bobby Ingram, Brown. Joe yep. Vicious, a lot of oh, great yeah. – yeah. I, I always – you know, I might be biased or whatever it might be, but I felt the 90s there, you know, once Penn State got in the Big Ten, I think we really kind of um, – really opened up the doors. Uh, Penn State's always been a powerhouse, but, you know, the type of players that were playing, you know, going to the Big Ten um, really kind of put us in a, a, a an entire different, what I call football light, right? You know, you got your Alabamas, Notre Dames, Penn State had always been in that, but getting into the Big Ten and really showing, you know, the firepower that we had and, and, and things that we could do with the players we were recruiting. Um, very blessed to be a part of that uh, that program. Yeah, and those those primetime matchups, my favorite games to watch, it's like Penn State, Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin are just oh, yeah. great games every year. Definitely. That's a fact there. <laughs> um, so then you would be selected in the first round, fifth overall in the 1998 NFL draft by the Chicago Bears. What were your thoughts on being drafted by the Bears? The Bears have a long history of the running back position. Were you excited to go to Chicago and – you know, try to carry on that tradition? Yeah, it was a very exciting time. Things were just happening so fast, so surreal um, with everything, being drafted, being, you know, around great players like, you know, Charles Woodson, Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf, uh, Randy Moss. Um, yeah. You know, 
it was it, it was just happened so fast, you know. It wasn't like the recruiting process. It was like bam, you know, <laughs> you go into the league, you get drafted, and you start up a whole new you know mind frame of you know what this is going to entail. So um, very blessed, you know. When I look back on it, um, I would have loved to have some better success, just because that's just the worldly feel that you want. Mm. Um, but there's not too many people that can say that um, you was able to play at that high level. So blessing um and i try to use that platform to encourage kids that we don't know the outcome of things but if we work hard we can always have an opportunity and a chance yeah absolutely um and then uh yeah you were the same draft class as longtime bear center olin Cruz. uh you reunite with bobby ingram there in chicago yep um what was it like playing at Soldier Field? Uh, and, you know, that's one of my favorite stadiums. I'm a Bears fan. Grew up a Bears fan. Soldier Field is, you know, right there on the lake with the wind and the weather. I love it there. Uh, what was it like for you, as, you know, playing there? You know, the fans, I mean, there's, I mean, I, I, what can I say about the fans? I mean, the loyalty, the commitment, uh, the success, you know, the history. I mean, you know, that's one of the most storied franchises. It is a storied franchise, the NFL. I mean, you can't talk about the NFL without Chicago Bears, you know, right, with, with Mr. Hallis and all the things that he did for pro football. Um, you know, uh, just the ownership there. Um, you know, I go back to the alumni weekends. And I was fortunate enough to take my younger son back with me. And, uh, you know, just being on the field during pregame warm-up, you know, having pictures taken with Mr. Kasky and, and things of that nature. I mean, um, you know, it's a dream come true because, you know, a lot of teams, you know, if you get drafted, you go to, you know, per se, um, I, I wouldn't say a non historic, you know, historic franchise, but Chicago bears. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's the pillar of the NFL and to be able to be a part of that. Um, you know, I was very fortunate enough to meet Walter Payton, uh, Matt Suey, yeah. blocks for Walter Payton's a Penn Stater. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just so many different, you know, story plots of just, you know, when I look back on it now, how blessed I was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then that Bears Packers rivalry, playing in games like that. What was that rivalry like for you? Um, you know, it the one thing about playing in that game that I really enjoyed, you know, in, in both settings, up in Green Bay and in, in Soldiers Field, was just the passion of the fans. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it has it has like a college setting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just because it, there's so much history. Um, and it was always fun to play in that game, just you know. Um, just because of what that game from a history standpoint, and you could say, yeah, man, I played in that game. Like, yeah. you know, that, that was something that, you know, I, I look back on now and just think how blessed I was. That's very cool. Um, and it sucks that, you know, the, the knee injuries and the injuries that cut your career short. Um, do you think that in a more modern era, like today with the better medicine, better technology and stuff, you could have played longer and been more successful that way? Yeah. The, you know, I don't like to play the what if game, but I will say that, you know, through everything that happened in regards to the injury, um, you know, with my knee and things like that, I think the hardest part was not being able to play at that level you were so accustomed to playing with, right? You know, um, you're, you know, like, man, it just don't feel the same, you know, um, just certain things like that. That was hard, kind of the hardest part really kind of to swallow. But then I think that's a selfish mindset because then I take away from the blessings that I had being able to play the game. It, at each level, you know, when I coach football, I would talk to my team. I said, you know, probably the biggest blessing that I, I had as a player was being able to play on every day of the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, that, that to me, man, was it was really cool. And I try not, try not to look back at the injury. That's just a part of it. You don't want to think about it, but it's part of it. And it happened. But, man, to be able to play on Friday night and be able to play on Saturdays and then be able to turn around and play on Sundays. Yeah. I'm like, man, it, you know, I, I – I, I, I've been pretty blessed, man, to be able to kind of like live this out and share this story with people to say, hey, small kid from a small farming community. Um, and all I did was just take, you know, was blessed by God to be able to take this ability and just work hard and took it to, you know, it just moved me on to another phase of my life. Absolutely. That's very cool. That's a good mindset because that's the biggest thing is it's mental. It's like you, you and mentally, you can do all the same stuff, but your body just can't do it anymore. And that's got to oh, be yeah. so tough. And then, <laughs> And then when you're out of the game no longer, you know, it's, it's like, you know, that's why the biggest thing that I like to, you know, promote and all that is mental health for like, you know, going through these issues and stuff, you know? Yeah. And that's a, that's a very fair assessment because, you know, we all go through that as men, right? You know I mean? I'm not going to sit there and say that I didn't go through it or still go through it. It's just, 
just how you look at it. It's your perspective. Um, yeah. it's what it's your it's your walk. It's it's what motivates you every day. Mine's by my Lord and Savior. Um, just because that's I know He's always going to be there. That's my kind of my answer to what He wants me to do each and every day. Because when I look back on my life, man, I'm blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, from a worldly perspective, yeah, I wish I could have done this and done that. But man, the impact that I've been fortunate enough to have on certain people and continue to use that impact because football has been a platform for me, right? Yeah. That platform, you know, it took time to really understand and garnish what that platform is for to use it that right way. And I'm still growing and making sure and trying to make sure I use it in that, that kind of that, that setting or in that environment. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, and then, uh, Let's see here. So you would go on post football. You would at one point become the head coach at Bradford High School in Ohio from 2010 to 2013. What was it like being a head coach for a little bit? I tell you what, the funnest thing about this group of young men that I coached, I came in as a volunteer assistant um, their freshman year. Um, and then I became the head coach when they were sophomores. Um, but the group of kids that I had all through there, um, you know, the one thing I wanted to kind of convey to them, um, and some of the things I learned from Coach Paterno that I knew would add more to life than just the football game. Yeah. Um, I'm very blessed that, I, you know, um, I just married one of my uh, running backs and, and his girlfriend all through high school. You know, I officiated their wedding and to see his growth and see where he's going. Uh, I officiated another wedding for my, one of my offensive linemen, you know, that played for me. Nice. Um, you know, very, you know, they're all doing well. Um, you know, they're leading a great life. They become fathers. That's that that's the part I got into it because I know Coach Paterno is looking down on us guys at Penn State and mm -hmm. seeing, you know, that that's all he ever wanted was for us to be good people, um, learn from our mistakes, grow from them, um, be humble and admit to them, and then wake up every day with a new presence and a newfound uh, uh, outlook on life and be better than you were the previous day. And that's all I shared with those kids. And I and and being honest with them about successes and failures, you know, yeah. because sometimes as an athlete, people think you're always successful. They never see the failure. They never see unless it's blowed up in the media or whatever. But when you can humbly talk about that and put yourself in their shoes, then it becomes relatable. And then it becomes a relationship that grows not only from that moment, but for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's the great thing about sports to me is like it's equal opportunity and it develops so much character and so much humility and so many good lessons to be learned from sports. It's very no, 100 percent. You're right yeah. about that. Now, do you still follow the uh, college football and the NFL and all that? Oh, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's, you know, this that's something that you don't turn off. I mean, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm going to still look at film, you know. I, you know, that that's just part of who I am, you know. So, yeah, man, I'm big game this weekend, Penn State. Uh, you know, they got Justin Fields been announced QB1 for, you know, the remainder. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, I, I look at all those stories, storylines and, you know, and, say, man, what's different from now when I played? But, yeah, I, I still follow it very, very closely. Nice. What do you think of David Montgomery? I'm a, I'm a big fan of David Montgomery's uh, for the Bears. I've been – since, I think, 2019, I've been tweeting hashtag feed Montgomery. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I feel like that would help the entire offense. That would help the quarterbacks. I feel like it's something Matt Nagy doesn't do enough. Uh, we saw this last week, Bill Lazor taking over play calling and gave Montgomery a lot of touches and he went off against Detroit. Now, unfortunately he gets hurt, but, uh, you know, somehow survived, uh, didn't get a, a major injury and should be back right. in four, five weeks. What's your thoughts on David Montgomery and the current bears right now? Um, you know, the game is always going to be about, you got to run the football. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you look at the makeup of the NFL, if you look at who makes it in the postseason, it's a two-headed monster, which is what it comes from the running back. You know, um, you know, you got two good running backs to kind of, you know, balance each other out. And then you got a good defense that kind of bends, but it doesn't break. Yeah. How do you get there? You know, you get, you push the ball downfield. I'd like to see, you know, uh, Mr. Robinson get a couple more catches down the field, you know, with, oh, yeah. with Justin. I think that'll happen. That will open up a lot of things. Um, put the defense in better situations to late. You know, Cleo Mack and some of them guys kind of pin their ears back and see their athletic ability make a lot of plays. So I think the, the pieces are there. It's just putting it together to get that right, you know, kind of, uh, you know, togetherness with Justin in there as quarterback. And I think that, you know, he'll provide some things that's not been able, not been done before at that quarterback position, especially in the NFC North. 
Um, and then from there, I think it'll take off. And hopefully they'll keep doing that, you know, as they progress, you know, with him at quarterback. But I'm pretty excited where they're going and what, what's going to happen. Yeah, are you happy to see him named starter for going forward after the back and forth from Nagy talking about if Dolan's healthy, he's going to start. So many of his Bear fans hated to hear that. Uh, we see the potential in Justin Fields, how the ball just takes off from his arm, his ability to run the ball as well. He seems to be smart, and he seems to be able to give us something that we haven't had the quarterback position in a long time. Yeah, you know, um, I've been fortunate enough to see Justin back when he's in high school. Um, wow. My son was, uh, when they went to the opening, which is like a big seven-on-seven seven, um, thing that Nike puts on for like the top players in the country. My son was on Justin's team out in Beaverton, Oregon for that that event. And I got to witness him out there, you know, um, throwing the ball. Um, and I knew right then and there, just, I mean, the ball just jumped off his hand. He's got great touch. Um, sorry, I had to witness it at Penn State when he played against my Nindy line. But I kind of knew his 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 capabilities just as a, as a young player. I mean, his, his motivation, you could just tell he just walks to a different, you know, um, swagger. You know, yeah. and I think that that fits the mold there in Chicago. And I think that him playing at Ohio State, being in the weather and an environment, the fan base, because uh, he's been in the Midwest, you know, two years before getting drafted to the Bears. Um, the sky's the limit for him. I uh, just hope they put all the weapons and the people around him that he can really excel at that position for that organization. But yeah. I think that he will, you know, and I, and I think that everybody's bought in that if we do the right thing for this young man, that he will be the face of the franchise. And then from there, he'll have veterans wanting to play for him. You know, and, and and I think that he'll be able to do those things moving forward. Yeah. Um, and then, so you had a college teammate, uh, Matt Rule, who's now a head coach for yeah. the, the Panthers. Oh. D- did you, uh, could you have foreseen that back then, him being a head coach? And what do you think of the job he's done so far with the Panthers? Matt was a, he was a student of the game. You know, he was a linebacker. We was in the same linebacker's room, um, you know, when I first started out. Um you know, to see Matt, you know, evolve to where he's at, uh, that didn't surprise me because he was that far advanced into the game. I knew he would get in coaching, um, but to see him uh, where he's at now, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, to, to, I watched him at Temple, and then from Temple he went to Baylor, and, you know, he he paid his dues, you know, yeah. and to see him where he's at, man, I wish him nothing but luck, and, and I know he will continue to do well at that level. Nice. Uh, one last question. I'll ask you, what do you think a lot of talk has been about the taunting uh, or not? Well, the taunting, but and then the targeting penalties in college football and some officiating issues in both leagues. What do you think uh, is, you know, we can do to, to make the game a little bit better? I hate to see kids get and ejected from games for just tackling and, and playing on instincts. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a little bit of helmet to helmet contact, even when you lead with the shoulder. What do you think of the the rules that way? Yeah, it's uh <laughs> that's an open that's a kind of a a question that you know when I look back at it, uh, I probably would have got called for targeting as much as I would lower my head around over cash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's such a uh, a subjective call. It's a bang bang play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that there's instances where um you know. And in the game of football, you want to make sure you show your presence. It's a dude sport, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to play the game, you got to be a dude, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There's yourself and 10 other guys out there that you're trying to um, exhort your your strength and things of that nature. So it kind of it gets convoluted that we forget that. But in the same aspect of it all, I don't think that these players are warned it from some of the things that I've seen uh, to eject them and take them out of the game. Um, I think that there's opportunity to – talk about a a little bit more you know don't get so hamstrung on you know getting players out of the game because it's a bang bang play you know what I mean like if the dude egregiously did it if you know if a receiver is not paying attention and he gets depleted or you know he gets hit and he's not paying attention like he deliberately did that you know what I'm saying like there's certain things where you can kind of mitigate some of those things but you know when a, a running back drops his head and you're going after the ball and things of that nature I mean it's a bang bang play saying hey you know, there was nothing egregious in what he was trying to do. It's just a bang, bang play. You know, hey, we're going to move forward with that. So I think that there needs to be that aspect of the game to looking at these kind of hits and making a better better judgment and decision um, instead of just removing these players out of the game. Um, because, they were, you know, that that's not right for the players. You know, they're like, man, I wasn't really trying to do that. You know, it wasn't really egregious. So I just hope that they find, you know, that happy medium in there for all the players 
so everybody can align to what you know what needs to be done and that's protect everybody from a safety aspect absolutely i think you know it's not ill will it's like the game's a leverage game you know and like you want to go low and be able to hit them to push them back so they don't gain more yards especially on like a third and short fourth and short and we're at the goal line and so and you want players to play instinctual you don't want them thinking too much out there uh, right. so it's an interesting i think they should try and adopt like uh, in the nba how there's a flagrant one flagrant two and uh, you That's know right. i'm fine with a 15 yard penalty but let's keep them in the game and not throw yeah. them out every time you know unless it's a great right. Yeah, and that, that's a very that's a very you know uh, you know uh, co concept is to, to use something that makes sense. All right, that's a fragrant or that's an egregious. You know, hey, fifteen yards. You know, and, and then if it happens again, you know, you go yeah. from there. But I think yeah. that they're I think they'll start looking at this and and kind of saying, okay, the players have been educated to make sure they hit with their head up. Um, we've we've kind of set the you know the tone of what we wanted to do, but now we're going to kind of like de-escalate it a little bit. And continue the teaching aspect of it, but also kind of say, I don't think that these guys want to do things to hurt themselves or the guy that they're playing against. But in the same aspect of, like I said before, it's a dude sport, man. So you want to put as much, you want to inflict as much pain as you possibly can, mm -hmm. because that's just the name of the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, to get hit, to get tackled, um, to make plays, and things of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. Well. I appreciate it so much. You taking the time to come on the show, Chris. It was awesome to have you on and great to talk some football with you. Man, it's awesome. Anytime you need anything else, man, reach out. No, I'd love to sit down and we talk, you know, coming in some of these big games, you'll have a guest reach out, man. We can do some things that way too, bro. Awesome. I'm glad that, to hear that. And, uh, you know, great job. And I had a lot of fun on this one. So thank hey, you. You too, man. Hey, have a great day. Thanks, man. Yep, you too. Appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Have a great week, guys. Peace out.